Good morning, Friendship West. I would like to thank you all for coming out, but right now I'm here to kickstart Backlard Sunday, and I would like to open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all you've done for us all the graduates in the room, all the individuals that came here to support their graduates. It's been a long time coming. And I would like to thank every single person for always reassuring us, for always giving us hope and making sure that we value ourselves as people. Thank you for everything you've done for me. And thank you for everything you've done for every graduate that's had hardships, being able to prosper and being able to excel and welcome into a new chapter of their life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for our young people. No, come on, give God praise for our young people. Don't act like that. Come on, give God praise for our young people. Come on, you might not be graduating today, but you got a reason to give God praise. Come on, you got a reason to lift up holy hands. You woke up this morning with your mind. That's a reason to worship the Lord. I wish I had a prayer in church this morning. I know it should be some mamas and some daddies in the house with worship in your heart. Come on, with praise on your lips. Because God kept your children and God kept your child. That's a reason to worship the Lord on today. It could have been another way. It could have been another way. But we say thank you, Lord, for our children. We say thank you, Lord, for their future and their destiny. Lord, we say thank you that the corner got others, that the prison got others, that the grave got others, but for me and for my house. Y'all acting cute and bougie, but I just need about two or three to just give God the praise that he's worthy and due. You might not have graduated from Harvard or from Hampton or from Iowa, but just need some graduates from the school of hard knocks to just open up your mouth and tell God thank you for another day, for another chance, for another opportunity, for another hour. Come on, give him worship and praise with great expectation for somebody else's future. I need y'all to make some noise in here. Like you believe in that a master's degree is coming, debt free. Come on, give God praise like you believe in for debt paid off. Come on, for bills paid. Come on, for checks in the mail. For money in their hand. For the future that the devil can't stop. For the destiny that the devil can't steal. Somebody open up your mouth and give him praise like I haven't seen him. Ear hasn't heard it. It ain't even entered into the heart of man. The things that God is designing and planning and working out and hooking up for your babies. Somebody give him praise in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. You might not be, it might not be your child graduating, but you're going to have to learn how to shout for the future of your neighbor. Come on, give God worship for your neighbor. Why? Because if God is blessing my neighbor, that means blessing is in the neighborhood. And it is no secret what God can do, what he's done, for others, I'm so glad to know that he ain't stopped blessing, that he ain't stopped, it is no secret what God can do. Hey, 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 what he's done for us. Hey, he'll do, he'll do 
it for you. Come on, send up a shout in here. Come on, take about 10 seconds and just tear this place up, giving God praise for the future. this morning. Come on, would you receive our graduates this morning? Come on, clap your hands as they come. Amen. Amen. Stop, 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 stop. There we go. Good morning, Lord. Come on, give God praise for Lauren Barber. North Forney High School, Prairie View A&M University. Come on, give God praise for Jerry Bledsoe, Timberview High School, attending Prairie View A&M University, where he will major in mechanical engineering. Come on, give God praise for Ayana Busby a graduate of Uplift Hampton Preparatory Academy, attending Texas A&M University in the fall, where she will major in biology. Come on and give God praise for Sister Deshanna Chairs, a graduate of MacArthur High School, attending Texas Southern University, where she will major in nursing. Help me celebrate Anaya Folks, a graduate of Cedar Hill High School Early College Academy, magna cum laude, attending the University of Houston where she will major in psychology with a minor in criminology. Come on, help me celebrate Jasmine Henderson, a graduate of DeSoto High School. Come on, give it up for Jasmine. Help me celebrate Diamond Jackson, a graduate of Hillcrest High School. She also earned an Associate of Science degree from Dallas College in the fall. She will attend Prairie View A&M University to study political science and sociology with a minor in criminal justice. Help me welcome Kalani Jones. Kalani Jones, a graduate of Cedar Hill High School, in the fall, she will attend Midwestern State University, where she will major in biology with a minor in chemistry and pharmacy studies. 
Help me celebrate Mr. Thomas Jordan. A graduate of the Barack Obama Male Leadership Academy. He will attend Centenary College of Louisiana where he will study music education and play lacrosse. Help me celebrate Miss Kalia Pettigrew. Come on, a graduate of DeSoto High School. In the fall, she will attend Prairie View A&M University where she will major in health science. Miss Kennedy Pride, Miss Kennedy Pride, a graduate of Life High School in Waxahachie, a graduate of the, uh, she will attend the University of North Texas in the fall, where she will major in kinesiology on the pre-physical therapy track. Help us celebrate Aaliyah Taylor, a graduate of the School of Health Professions at Yvonne Yuletown View Center. She will attend Mount Holyoke College in the fall where she will also major in pre-med. Mr. Mackay Tolden, a graduate of Life High School, Waxahachie, he will attend Jackson State University in the fall, where he will major in computer science and cybersecurity, and also be a member of the Jackson State University marching band, that sonic boom of the South. Help me welcome Miss Anaya Whitaker. A graduate of the DeSoto High School, she will be attending Dallas Community College to study nursing. Mr. Amare Williams, a graduate of Cedar Hill High School Early College Academy, he will be attending Prairie View A&M University in the fall to major in mechanical engineering. Miss Adina Williams, a graduate of Penn Foster High School, a recipient of the Bridge Academic Scholarship. She will attend Miles College in Alabama where she will major in political science. Come on, celebrate our high school graduates. Our university graduates, we start with Miss Alicia Carter, a graduate of the Chicago School of Professional Psychology where she earned a degree in nursing. We also celebrate Ms. Kyla Nelson, a University of North Texas graduate, where she earned her Bachelor's of Arts in Journalism. She has future plans for a career in entertainment and in public relations. Come on, give God praise for our college graduates, our college graduates. And now we celebrate our graduate students. We start with Ms. Raven Harris, a graduate of the University of Alabama with her Master's of Science in Sports Hospitality with future plans of a doctorate in physical therapy. We also celebrate Ms. Taylor Nickerson, a graduate of Tennessee State University with her MBA in Finance. And she, she intends to continue on the path that God has for her with the goal of working as a financial analyst for a Fortune 100 or 500 company. Help me celebrate Ms. Monathan Rogers, a graduate of Boston University with her Master's of Science in Criminal Justice. She plans to continue her career as a cy cytogenetic uh, technologist and later work as a forensic scientist. Help me celebrate Ms. Khadijah Thibodeau, a graduate of Southern Methodist University. And we also celebrate Ms. Ranchelle Wyatt, a graduate of the University of North Texas, a Master's of Education in Education Leadership, which she earned with a 4.0 GPA. And we celebrate those earners of the doctoral degree. We start with Dr. Rhonda White, a graduate of Grand Canyon University, earning her doctorate of education. And last but not least, we welcome and celebrate today Dr. Sherry Williams, a graduate of Walden University where she earned her doctor of business administration. Friendship West family, Dr. Haynes, I present to you, come on, make some noise, our 2023 graduating class. Come on and give God praise for them.
Let's pray for our graduates. God, thank you so much for the gift of truth. Thank you so much for the gift of edification, enlightenment, and education. Thank you for the wisdom of our ancestor, Frederick Douglass, who said, knowledge unfits us for slavery. While piggybacking on Jesus, who said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Thank you, God, for how you have brought these, your children, through dangers, toils, and snares, and they didn't give up. I thank you for this accomplishment, this achievement. I thank you for this victory. I thank you for every mountain you brought them over, for every trial you've seen them through. I thank you for ordering their steps, even their stops, for keeping them all while blessing them to come to this point in their pilgrimage. And now, God, I cover each and every one of them. I cover our high school graduates. But as they get ready to adventure into what's next, that you, O oh God, will keep them, provide for them, direct them, protect them. You are God, you're good, you're able. So I place them in your hands in Jesus' name. I pray for our college graduates as they, O oh God, get ready for the next phase, the next chapter. I pray that you will give them the wisdom to write this next chapter in a way that glorifies you. Write this next chapter in a way, oh God, that, that blesses not only themselves, but others they come in contact with. I thank you for this victory, this graduation. I thank you for how you took care of them through a pandemic. I thank you, oh God, that they made it through Zoom classes and online classes and some in-person classes but the bottom line is they made it and for that we thank you thank you God for these graduates of graduate school in Jesus name I pray your blessings upon them may this graduate degree in a real sense open even more doors create more options for them so that even when others would look at them and say they can't their resume will say they can and so bless them open the right doors for them shut all of the wrong doors and give them the wisdom to discern the difference then god for these who are now who now attain their doctoral degree please bless them please keep them as they oh god now move to this next phase I pray again that you will order their steps. I pray that you will use them in a powerful way to impact this world. That they, oh God, may now share the knowledge, the liberating truth that they, oh God, have been exposed to. And that they, oh God, are now moving and living in. I place them in your hands. And now, God, I pray and cover and prayer all of their family members. I thank you for the loved ones, all who invested in them. I thank you for those who prayed for them. I thank you and praise you for those, oh God, who put some money in their pocket. I thank you and praise you for the scholarships that came. And now, oh God, I'm going to even be bold enough to believe that whatever debt there is, that you would go ahead and make a way out of no way. You are the God who provides, so supply everything every need according to your riches and glory. You are God good, you're able, and we lift them up to you in Jesus' name. Amen and hallelujah. Congratulations. So proud of you. God bless you. God bless you. I believe you go this way. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all did that. Can y'all praise God one more time for our graduate?
Walk together, children, don't you get weary? Walk together, children, don't you get weary? Walk together, children, don't you get weary? There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. Oh, walk together, children, don't you get weary? Walk together, children, don't you get weary? Walk together, children, don't you get weary? There's a great camp meeting in the promised land. I 
Praise God for our Kelly Corral blessing us in such a powerful way. Amen. We praise God for them. We praise God for the legend, the icon herself, Jewel Kelly. Amen. Amen. We praise God for the gift of this baccalaureate Sunday. So one more time, would you thank God for our college graduates? 
our graduate school graduates, our high school graduates. And then, I like what Pastor Magruder said, thank God if you graduated from the School of Hard Knocks, the University of Adversity. Yeah. I want to call your attention to Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6. I'm going to read the first five verses of the sixth chapter of the book of Daniel, but focus on verse 3, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version translation. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps stationed throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three presidents, including Daniel. To these satraps gave account so that the king might suffer no loss. Soon Daniel distinguished himself above all the other presidents and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to appoint him over the whole kingdom. So the presidents and the satraps tried to find grounds for complaint against Daniel in connection with the kingdom. But they could find no grounds for complaint or any corruption because he was faithful and no negligence or corruption could be found in him. The men said, we should not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Right. Verse 3, one more time. Soon Daniel distinguished himself above all the other presidents because an excellent spirit was in him. You may be seated in God's presence. I want to put a tag on this text and for a few moments with your prayers, I want to talk on this graduation or baccalaureate Sunday from the subject, I'm one of them ones. I'm one of them ones. Now, Pastor Magruder has helped me here whenever I have a subject that comes from a song that is ratchet, just to warn you uh, that uh, some of the lyrics are fire uh, but some of you are nodding your head because you're familiar with the rest of the lyrics. And so uh, just know this, don't, don't judge me, uh, but stick with I'm one of them ones. Okay, I'm one of them ones. I think it's J. Cole who raps, there's all types of trauma from drama that children see, type of ish that normally would call for therapy. But you know how it go in our community. Keep it inside. It don't matter how hard it be. Fast forward, them kids is grown and they blowing trees. In a real sense, I think all of us can identify and testify with the wisdom of J. Cole that because of the drama that we've been through, there is trauma that's not through with us. I'll do it one more time. The drama you've been through may, in a real sense, cause trauma to not be through with you. I'll make it real plain. I saw a story about a little boy who was walking a Great Dane. Great Danes are huge dogs. This little boy is nine years old, and by now you already know it's not so much the little boy walking the Great Dane as it is the Great Dane who is walking the little boy. The Great Dane decides to run, and the little boy is running after him, holding the chain, but really trying to hold on for dear life. After all, after a while, somebody yells out to the boy while laughing, where are you going? And the boy responds, wherever the dog wants to go. I think you understand by now that that Great Dane may well be a metaphor for trauma because if you're not careful, it's hard to address where you are going when trauma is taking you places you never planned on being. And already I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid. I've called out your flavor and you know what it means to have been through drama and as a consequence trauma is not through with you. And because it's not through with you, you can't even address the, con the question of where you are going in this thing called life because of where the great Dane, no, the dog of trauma is 
overtaking you. If you are not careful, trauma will dog you. And when trauma dogs you, it's hard to decide where it is you are going and where you want to go. Well, just in case you think you too good to be feeling what I'm talking about, I've been in conversation this week with Viola Davis. Viola Davis, that brilliant actor, Viola Davis, you will agree, that sister is super bad. And uh, while walking with her through, watch this, her amazing and moving memoir. And in this memoir, she is transparent and truthful. In this memoir, she digs deep and shares with the reader her own personal trauma. And y'all, she labels it, I love it, finding me. Now to find herself, she had to go through a lot of drama and discovered that trauma was not through with her. And she testifies in one riveting scene that still messes with me is that there was a time she's growing up in Rhode Island. Get that, Rhode Island. We're not talking about a state that is surrounded by a lot of folk that look like her. So stop right there and think with her. She grows up in a state, please don't miss this, where there were those who looked down on she and her family because they were othered. I could hang out right there, but you know what it means if you've been in settings where you are the only one where in that setting you are othered and made many times to feel unwelcome and unwanted. Well, that was a daily occurrence for Viola Davis and her family, sadly, to add to the other ring was the imprisonment of impoverishment. I think James Forbes refers to it as a weapon of mass destruction. And so here is Viola Davis othered in Rhode Island and then having to deal with impoverishment. They lived when she was five, six, seven years old in an apartment building that was low located right next door to the school where she was going. She testifies that one day while in school that she discovered that her apartment building because of structural flaws was always going to experience fires as a result of a bad system. Now you know I could hang out right there. Structural flaws create a bad system and as a consequence of living in in impoverishment, here it is, those structural flaws and bad system cause fires on the regular. One day, she's in class, and while in class, her teacher and the students notice that her apartment building is on fire just outside of the window, and that's when one student yells out, look, there's a fire. Another student yells out, isn't that where Viola lives? And then and the teacher, Miss Picard, looks at Viola, staring at her, glaring at her, and says, Viola, is that your house? All she can do, here it is, is sheepishly say yes. And then my sisters and brothers, she insightfully interprets that that was a metaphor for her existence as a young child, as she's traumatized by a, tra a tragedy across the street that is impacting her home only to discover the horrific reality. It's entertainment for the rest of those in her class. I think I'm coming through right now. Viola is simply saying on the one hand for her, it's a terrible tragedy, but it provides entertainment for her classmates, entertainment for her teachers. Y'all looking at me strange, but some of y'all feel me right now because there have been those low lowlifes in your life who while you were suffering, somehow they found in your horror some entertainment as it related to your pain. That, my sisters and brothers, is Viola Davis's testimony. She says her older sister came to live with her and she loved her dearly because her older sister one day, watch this, offered her some candy, but while offering her the candy, she looks at what's happening in their impoverished 
apartment and says to Viola, when you don't, when you grow up, you don't want to live like this. Do everything you can to work hard and not live like this. And that's when she says, you have to decide what it is you want to be and then work hard to fulfill what it is you want to be. Viola Davis, watch this, it's messing me up. Viola Davis said she did not forget what her sister said, but her sister said that after offering her candy. And at that point, all she could think about was candy. I think I'm going to stop and unpack that. Do y'all get the metaphor yet? In a real sense, there is trauma and drama all around her. Drama that she has seen, trauma that ain't through with her. And as a consequence, though her sister gives her a profound and powerful message, all she wants is candy. Don't judge her because when you've been through drama and trauma ain't through with you, sometimes all you want is some candy to feel good that taste good that make you feel better and so some of y'all are dating candy instead of discovering who it is you are supposed to be some of you find yourself experiencing those things that make you temporarily feel good they are good to you but not necessarily good for you it's candy that helps you not to deal with the drama that you have been through and the trauma that ain't through with you. Preach Freddie Haynes. I'm already doing that thing. And so my sisters and brothers hear me well that Viola Davis testifies that she wanted candy instead of dealing with the depth of what her sister was saying to her, decide what it is that you want to be. And then she goes back to that horrific scene where, please don't miss this, her, her home is on fire. And when she interprets it, she says, this is entertainment for those who have already exiled me. I got to stop right there. She uses an interesting word, exile. She said her classmates and teacher had exiled her. Do you know the meaning of exile? To be in exile is to find yourself involuntarily in a place where you don't want to be. And exile is to find yourself, watch this, moved against your will to out, out away from your homeland. That meant that she was saying in Rhode Island of the United States of America, she felt like an exile in her own country. She felt like an exile in a nation that had been built on the bloodied backs of her ancestors. She felt like an exile in her own country. I hang out right there because that's exactly where Daniel is. Daniel is in exile and the Bible lets us know Daniel my sisters and brothers is in exile because watch this between what was at 598 and 587 before the common era under here it is the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar the bloody ego maniacal leader of Babylon they had defeated Judah and when they defeated Judah they destroyed the city they demolished the temple and then deported some of those who were still there in Judah among the deportees among the exiles was a young brother by the name of Daniel. Daniel is young. Watch this. He's experiencing all types of drama from what a child like him sees and the trauma that ensues. Can you imagine the trauma that Daniel experienced as he watched his homeland destroyed? Can you imagine the trauma Daniel experienced as he was uprooted and taken from all he had ever known to a place he had never been. The great Dane, the dog of trauma, is taking him where he never thought he would go. This is where we meet Daniel. Daniel, watch this. Somehow, some way, in spite of being a stranger in a strange 
land, the book lets us know that God blesses him and promotes him because of his amazing gifts and skills. And then in chapter 5, he literally speaks truth to power and tells the dictator, this is what's about to go down. You've been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And that night, the Bible says, Belshazzar is dead. He is dead. He is done. And the book lets us know why. Because Persia, led by Darius, had defeated Babylon. And so now there's a new king running things. And this new king blows my mind because somehow he sees something in Daniel. And Daniel becomes one of three presidents over administrative districts, some 120 of them. And the Bible lets us know Daniel, my sisters and brothers, is bawling and shot calling. But wait, as Daniel is bawling and shot calling, the Bible says that there are some haters who have professional jealousy. I think that's the word I want to hang out with because here is Daniel doing real well and those who are his peers don't like the fact that the king is about to promote him because of his excellent spirit and they get upset and the Bible says they begin to scheme and connive to set him up to take him out. Why? Because Daniel has an excellent spirit. I think I'll hang out right there. Whenever you aspire for excellence, those who are mediocre see you as the enemy. I think I'll do that one more time. Whenever you make up your mind that you are going to live your best life, there are those who are living their worst life who can't handle your best life and somehow they will make you their enemy simply because they are projecting onto you what's empty in themselves and when they project that onto you, they will come for you without you sending for them because they are jealous of who you are, what you have, and what you have going for yourself. Preach Freddie Haynes. I'm doing the best I can. And so watch this, my sisters and brothers, because God has me talking to somebody who's on a job and you know there are folk on that job. You've tried to be nice to them. You've tried to do right by them, but they can't stand the ground you walk on. As a matter of fact, they get mad when you walk in the room. If they're talking to someone else, they go silent and you can be trying to get in the conversation and their body language will exclude you to act like you ain't even there. Their issue is not you. Their issue is themselves. But you are a reminder of what they ain't. And because you are what they ain't, they get mad at you. I'm preaching. Y'all just not getting this thing. Professional jealousy. On the same job, trying to make business work for the same company, and yet they are jealous of you. They are hating on you and doing everything they can to undermine you. Daniel has been through drama, from trauma as a child, and now as an adult, he got to deal with childish grown folk. But the Bible says, Daniel excels in exile. Oh, I'm about to preach up in here. Daniel is in exile, but the Bible says he has a spirit of excellence. He has an excellent spirit because he does not allow where he is to define who he is and as a consequence, who he is redefines where he is because Daniel says, I'm one of them ones. I'm one of them ones. Now, 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 my hip-hop community, you already know my subject ain't original with me. And I got to be real honest with you, I didn't even know what I'm one of them ones was until about a month ago. Watch this. I'm talking to Albany Jewel, and Albany Jewel says, Daddy, 
on uh, social media, someone has said something about you. And so I didn't want to hear it because I'm always hearing stuff about me that I ain't trying to hear. And so Abney says, no, daddy, check this out. And so here was this cat on Instagram, on the gram, and what he does, he does, he puts a picture, watch this, a snapshot, evidently, of me calling him, and he says, y'all, I gotta go, Pastor Haynes is calling me, and there's a snapshot that says, Reverend Freddie Haynes calling, and then Albany said, read what's under that, and that's when somebody else said, that's Pastor Haynes, he's one of them ones. Now, I didn't know what that was and so Albany said go check it out what it means daddy and so y'all we went to Urban Dictionary I checked out Rap Dictionary and all of a sudden I began to feel good about myself because someone was saying about your boy I'm one of them ones now one already means you in first place but when you one of them ones it means that you are first among the first it means that you are high among the high when you are one of them ones and so y'all it dawned on me when you know God for yourself you better make up your mind I'm gonna be one of them ones because when you know God my Bible says God says about you you're the head and not the tail one of them ones my Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you you one of them ones my Bible says you're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a child of God, made in the image of likeness of God. You are one of them ones. One of them ones. One of them ones. Oh, you know, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to go Pentecostal preacher. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm one of them ones. How about you? I'm one of them ones. I'm one of them ones. And so I came to talk to my graduates today because y'all and Daniel have a lot in common. You've been through the trauma of a pandemic, and yet here you are sitting up in your cap and gown in church today giving God the glory because the trauma of a pandemic could not block you. It could not stop you because you are one of them ones. You're one of them ones because God bless you to overcome odds. God bless you to somehow make it through in spite of what you're going through y'all are one of them ones okay okay I didn't have time to memorize their lyrics but I got to read them to you not the ratchet ones but Mayhem Lauren Medib and DJ Muggs say one of the best one of the illest one of the trillest, one of the realest, one of the livest, one of the flyest, still setting fires, I'm still one of them ones. Hey, I'm trying not to shout, but y'all, I'm letting you know we have exiled and we have excelled in exile because that's who we are. That's in our DNA. And so I say to my graduates, evidently, you have dead in your blood. You're one of them ones who write like Alice Walker, Amanda Gorman, Isabel Wilkerson, James Baldwin, Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, Nikki Giovanni, Octavia Butler, Tony Morrison, Tana Hesse, Coates, Will Gaffney. You're one of them ones who think deeply and open the door to new eras like George Washington Carver, W.E.B. Du Bois, Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, Dorothy Vaughn, Neil deGrasse Tyson, James Cone, Katie Geneva Cannon, the Floyd Thomases, Stacy and Floyd, Michael Eric Dyson, Cornell West. You're one of them ones who can put on a show and sing, sing like Aretha, jam like Beyonce, move like Michael Jackson, lift us up like Leontine, Luther, Marion Anderson, and Marvin Gaye. You're one of them ones with an excellent spirit. So act like Sydney. Denzel, Halle, Viola, and Angela, and then teach like Marva Collins, Homazel Davis, Benjamin Mays, Mordecai Johnson, one of them ones who can make masterpieces out of leftovers and 
create 50 years of hip-hop culture. So you go on one of them once because you descend from Africa, Bombarda, Chuck D, a queen named Latifah, LL Cool J, Nas, Jay-Z, and then go ahead if you play ball and ball with the mamba mentality like Kobe, be the goat in the ring and out of the ring like Ali. Use your platform built by athletic brilliance as a stage to fight for justice like Paul Robeson, Althea Gibson, Serena Williams, Tommy Smith, John Carlos, Bill Russell, Kareem, Abdul Jabbar. We are one of them once because we come from a people who are one of them ones. I'm one of them ones. Oh, yeah. Let me swag for a little bit. I'm one of them ones. I'm a swag because I'm one of them ones. So how, how, how does it work? I'm almost done. How does it work? When you are one of them ones, I love this text, because the text lets me know, oh my God, this is going to get you. When you're one of them ones, it starts, I love it, with your personhood. Your personhood. Here is what messes me up in this text, and that is in our personhood, we discover that there is, there is, is, is almost uh, like, like God gives us something in who we are, regardless of where we are, and it powers us through where we are. Here's what gets me, and Doc, I should probably talk to you about this, but, but, but here's what messes me up. Danielle, do you know that chapter one, we see Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, kidnapped, taken to Babylon, names changed to Belshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Y'all know the story. That happens in chapter 1. But guess what we're calling my man in chapter 6? We ain't calling him Belshazzar. We're calling him Daniel. Matter of fact, the book is named Daniel. I'm not even done. One of my Hebrew, one of my Old Testament professors was lecturing on this particular story one time and said Daniel's name etymologically means God is my judge. And then my professor slid this in and shouldn't have let me hear it. And that is Daniel could easily have said God is my justice. I love it because womanism has taught us about divine justice that overrules injustice on earth. That means there will be injustice on earth that oftentimes becomes legal, but it ain't justice. Everything legal ain't necessarily justice. You didn't get that? All right, all right. So you know that we're in Texas. And we have a governor who is tried out to be the Grand Wizard. And, and Governor Klan in Austin just signed in a bill outlawing basically diversity, equity, and inclusion. Just get what he's saying. He's basically saying now, when you go to these public white institutions in Texas, you will find yourself without protection, without community, unless you organize it yourself, without support. That is what happens in this state because Governor, watch this, Governor Klan has made up his mind that he's aiming for a white-only state. All right, all right, I'm not coming through. And here it is, it's legal. But it ain't justice. Y'all still didn't get this. Uh, slavery was legal, but it wasn't justice. Jim and Jane Crow apartheid was legal. 
but it wasn't justice. Apartheid in South Africa, legal, but it wasn't justice. Colonization of countries of color, legal, but it's not justice. I just preached in Puerto Rico on Friday night, and guess what? Puerto Rico is a colony. Puerto Rico is not, uh, is, is not given rights. They have responsibilities, but they have no rights. It's legal, but it ain't justice. And I'm simply trying to say, be very careful about what's happening with the Supreme Court. As they pass stuff, it is legal, but God knows it ain't justice. Y'all still not getting it. I'll come home to you. They basically are determined to build a warehouse next door to this church on Wheatland Road and have 18 wheelers coming down this street right across from, right next door to a church, right across from Carter High School and a neighborhood. Here are these white colonizers who are trying to come to our side of town and build a warehouse they won't build along 635. They won't build in Highland Park, but they want to engage in economic colonization. Now, now, forgive me, forgive me, DA, but Pastor Ayer shared with me that one of her classmates who looks like us, heard about our fight and told Pastor Ayers, well, you do know what they're doing is legal. So is slavery, fool. Would you like to go back to that since you down with what's legal? And it's sad when we are so busy trying to approximate whiteness that we will adopt their values and forget about our own community and the values of justice. So watch it, watch it, watch it. I, I, I like this because, because Daniel says God is my justice. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all, we wouldn't have made it if it hadn't been for God being our justice. Because God knows we ain't got justice in this country, but even when this country was unjust, God said, I'm going to be justice for you and make a way out of no way. I'm going to keep you and bless you. But let me stop and get in your Kool-Aid and call out your flavor because somebody is listening to me right now. And your thing is, you know what, Freddie Haynes, I've been victimized by injustice. I've seen people do me dirty and do me wrong. I got a shout for you. The shout is God has the last word. The shout is God will come through because the Bible says this is Daniel. He stays Daniel through every chapter. He doesn't allow where he is to change who he is. He stays Daniel. You still not shout. Now, I'm going to shout by myself right now because here's what shouts me. The text says he stays Daniel and you better stay who you are. Uh, stay who you are. Stay, stay who you are. Be what you is and not what you ain't. Because if you ain't what you is, you is what you ain't. That's hand bone. So, 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 so be who you are. Be who you are. Uh, uh, I'll I, I do it like this. Uh, Jelani Cobb, Dr. Jelani Cobb, brilliant scholar. Jelani Cobb tells a story that when he was growing up, uh, went to Philly and he said that someone uh, called him, no, his, no, no his, his mentor, Mr. Felton, was driving, and while driving, overheard someone refer to them as the N-word. And when they did, Jelani said them fighting words. Mr. Felton said, hold on, let me ask you something, Jelani. If I right now were to call you Robert, would you answer? He said, no. What if I called you Michael? No. That ain't my name. What if I called you John? That ain't my name. He said, so they just call you something that ain't your name and you want to fight about it? And then Jelani Cobb reached the conclusion oftentimes we are complicit in our own oppression. Whenever we buy into somebody's subscription and description to who we are. So if that ain't who you are, the old folk put it this way. You, who, who you are ain't what people call you, it's what you answer to. And so don't answer to what folk call you. If it ain't you, you just continue to be you. 
They called Jesus all kinds of names, wine bibber. They called him all kinds of names. But guess what Jesus called himself? I am the light of the world. Jesus called himself, I am the living water. I am the great physician. Jesus had his own sense of amness. That's why I love what Shively Smith said. Shively Smith said, please note that when our ancestors escaped enslavement, self-emancipated, the first thing they did was change their name. And so that's why Araminta Ross became Harriet Tubman. She changed her name. Y'all still didn't shout. Frederick Douglass escaped and changed his name and became Frederick Douglass. What were they saying? I am no longer that slave name. I'm no longer what you tried to make me. I've got a new name over in glory and it's mine, all mine. Okay, okay. So, 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 so Daniel lets us know that when you're, you're securing your personhood, even, you know, oh, 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 I'm gonna phrase it like this. This is so good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you stay true to who you are, in spite of their lies, you soon discover God has the last word. Because folk gonna lie on you. Let, let, let me talk to my graduates, okay? Folk are gonna lie on you. They gonna talk about you, dog. You come up with all kind of stuff about you that ain't got nothing to do with the truth. But that's when you stay true to who you are. Remember who you are, not what they say about you, not what they call you, and then watch God come through and do what only God can do. Because when you read the rest of the chapter, the book says they scheme and connive, and Daniel gets thrown in the lion's den, but the book lets us know that Daniel's name is God is my justice, and since God was his justice, the folk who threw him in the lion's den got thrown in the same lion's den that they tried to destroy Daniel with, but here's your shout. The shout is, Daniel gets thrown in the den, lions roaring, and the next day the king says, Daniel, did your God deliver you? And Daniel, the Bible says, answered. Let me do it one more time. Y'all graduated, so y'all get me. Let, me. let me talk to y'all one more time, okay? Daniel spends the night with hungry, voracious lions. The night. Next morning, sun comes up. King yells into the den, Daniel, hoping against hope to hear something. Daniel, are you there? The Bible says, Daniel answered. I, I don't care what he said. The fact of the matter is he answered. Daniel basically went silly and said, I'm still here by the grace of God. Oh, I'm not going to shout yet. But is there anybody with a still here testimony? You still answered in spite of the hell you've been through. In spite of the hungry lions trying to devour you. You're still here. Okay. But then, but then, but then they were protected by principle. Yeah. Because the Bible says, watch this, they had a spirit of excellence in them. And verse 4 gets me because verse 4 says, here come these little haters. They said, we're going to get them. Uh, and they can't find nothing because they were faith, because Daniel was faithful. I didn't say that good. So they, they, they're trying to scheme, connive, plot, plan. We're going to find something on Daniel, find some dirt. And the Bible says he was too clean because he was faithful. He was faithful. He when you're one of them ones, folk have a hard time finding stuff. That's when they start to make up stuff. Because you're one of them ones. Now, some of y'all looking at me real strange right now, like, well, I ain't never had nobody make up stuff on me. Because you're the one making up stuff on other people. So that, that's why you're sitting in here looking all strange at me right now. And so you ain't feeling this because you know you're the one that's trying to create dirt on other people. So, so I get you. I, I see you. If somebody next to you is real quiet right now, 
You're one of them other ones. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I, I, that, that's not in the sermon, so let me get back to the sermon, okay? I just felt something from some folk who just sitting up there, and I, I, I could feel you, you rigidly because you are the one who ain't one of them ones because you're one of them other ones. And since you're one of them other ones, you can't shout with the rest of us who are one of them ones. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. So, so but the text says his character because he had a spirit of excellence. Excellence. Spirit. I love that. Spirit having to do with what's internal because you can make up a whole lot of stuff outside and then be ratchet inside. Uh, ha, ha, I, mean, I mean, some of y'all know people who dress fine but live ratchet uh, because, because basically it starts within. It starts within. I was, uh, I forgot where I was preaching. I think it was, I, was, I, was, I was in D.C. Anyway, uh, somebody came up to me after church who knows a member of this church, and so what they did, they came to me and said, watch you all the time uh, on YouTube and watch you on Sundays, and so I know that you're going to like what I'm about to tell you. Now, now, there's a line of people behind this person who, you know, want to greet the guest preacher, and they want to tell me a story, and so, 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 okay, cool, go ahead, and so, so he tells me the story, and, 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 and it got me. I'm glad he told me this story. I got to give it to you now. He testifies that he had graduated from Lincoln University, I think in Pennsylvania, and then went to Yale, and when he gets to Yale, he discovers that it is some kind of cold there during the winter. He graduates from Lincoln. His daddy gives him, this is back in the 90s, his daddy gifts him with a car. It's a Honda Accord, but wait, it ain't even a new New Honda Accord. It said used Honda Accord with 80,000 miles on it already. What a graduation gift. He says to his dad, Dad, you could have given me the money. I'd have picked out my own car, but thank you. His dad said, but son, you don't understand. I bought you a rare battery. It's a Sears Die Hard Platinum brand Valerie battery. It's a platinum brand battery. And he said when his dad told him that, it's like, I don't care because I'm driving up to Yale with all these white folk in their fine cars with the old used Honda Accord and I've got to go to huh, I've got to go to Yale and look real strange. Well, that first winter it was one of the worst in the history of New Haven, Connecticut. The snow came out just as they were moving into the last two weeks of school and they shut down New Haven for a week. It's almost like being in Texas when it gets bad. So you know it's bad because New Haven is used to snow. But New Haven was shut down, he said, Pastor, for a whole week. And yet at the end of that week, when I went to start up my car, I turned that ignition. And do you know the car started? Now those who had a Mercedes, a BMW, a Jaguar, all them fly fine cars, they could not start start but my car started because my daddy put under the hood something that could not be seen but gave me the power to start when nobody else could start I'm trying to let you know when you know God for yourself God put something on the inside that gives you the power to start when other folk look good on the outside you've got power on the inside Now, now, then he, now, now that, that was a shout right there. And he has me shouting. I said, man, that's awesome. He said, but that ain't the end of it. I said, what? He said, no, that ain't the end. The end is this. I drove home, and when I got home, I told my dad, thank you, because my dad had put something on the inside that gave me the power to keep on going when others could not go. And I told my dad, my dad said, I just got one question. What did you do with that power? Did you just drive yourself? He said, oh no dad, you taught me better than that. Everyone whose car didn't start, I gave them a ride to take them where they needed to go. I gave them a ride. I'm trying to help somebody right now. When God puts something in you that gives you the power to keep on going, it ain't just about you. And so I got to talk to my, can I talk to y'all a little bit more longer? Because it's not just about 
graduating, getting you a good job, and developing your brand. Okay, okay. I'll be back. I'll be back. Uh, 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 let, me, let me read this to y'all. This got me. Uh, I, I, I love to take, take good notes on, on some of the great giants of rap. And one of the great giants of rap gave me the line that just made me shout. And I got to give it to y'all. Y'all seen Bay says, I don't care what kind of brand you are. care what kind of man you are. What your principles and standards are. Oh, I got to get you right now. I'm trying to let somebody know. I got you. We're in the age of my brand. I don't know want to know about your brand. I want to know about your belief. That's hot right there, huh? Because in this life, your brand will only carry you so far. It's about your character. It's about your cause. It's about your purpose. And your purpose has got to be bigger than you. And when your purpose is bigger than you, that means you use what God gives you on the inside to keep on starting to bless somebody else. If you don't believe it, ask Jesus because Jesus lets us know. This is what I did in Puerto Rico because it was a real mixed audience. It was a real mixed audience. A lot of white folk, Asians, Hispanics, and us. And I'm the only black preacher owned. And so I had to represent. And so I was dealing with this whole concept of privilege. So let me talk to my privileged, my privileged, here it is, privilegers. Jesus shows how to handle privilege. Matthew 4, Jesus, after being baptized in the Jordan, is driven into the wilderness, fast for 40 days, 40 nights. The devil comes up and says, yo, gee, if you the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, I don't have to define myself by the fulfillment of my appetite. I don't have to define myself by doing what you want me to do. I'm more than who you say I am. And so man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. Wait, he's hungry, fasting 40 days and 40 nights, but doesn't feed himself. Ten chapters later, in the wilderness with the food insecure multitude, the Bible says, he says, we got to feed these folk. He said, but we ain't got nothing but a two-piece and five biscuits. That's all I need. He took a two-piece, five biscuits, and fed the multitude. He used his privilege not to feed himself, but he used his privilege to feed other people. Listen, you privileged, but don't, 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 don't use your privilege just to feed your capitalistic appetite because capitalism will make your success all about you. But I've discovered Jesus said life ain't about being a success. It's about being great. Greatness has to do with service. Greatness has to do with what you do for other people. I got to quit. Here's my last piece, and I'm done. That is, text says, after your personhood and principle, you got to have a plug. I'm, I'm hip hop, y'all. It's 50 years hip hop, so I got to go with that. Hip hop. What's a plug? Anybody know what a plug is? You know what a plug is. You hip hop. A uh, plug is someone who's got to connect and can do for you what you can't do for yourself. And so they're the plug. And y'all, the ultimate plug is the creator and sustainer of life. The ultimate plug who's got connects that nobody else can have. I'm talking about the plug because Daniel, the Bible says, they said the only way we can get him is if somehow we come at him through the laws of his God. Who oh, you didn't shout. He got a plug. If we can somehow come at him through his plug, and here's the danger. If ever you come at a child of God, you got to go through God. And if you go through God, God says, I'll take what you intend for evil and bring something good out of it. Okay, okay. 
That scripture, Joseph, at the end of Genesis, says to his brothers who think he going to pay them back for how they did him, because they did him dirty. They sold him into slavery, did him dirty. Joseph said, y'all chill. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I got to quit. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Now, I could take it real slow and just shout on, you meant it for evil, but. What church y'all go to? But a conjunction. I got to talk to my graduates because y'all know what a conjunction is, don't you? I didn't always know. I'm not smart like y'all, Pastor Magruder, Pastor Ayers, and them. So I had to learn one Saturday morning watching cartoons. And while watching Schoolhouse Rock, I found out what a conjunction is. It's a fly song. Conjunction, junction, what's your... Y'all saw that, didn't you? The function of a conjunction is to connect what's before with what's after. And if you have an adversative conjunction like but yet, however, how be it, it means whatever's on the front side is about to get overruled by what's on the back side. You meant it for evil, but wait, God. That's all you need right there, but God. Anybody got a but God testimony? You got fired from your job, but God. You ran out of money, but God. Your mama got sick, but God. Wait, here it is. But God meant. Stop right there. The word meant in Hebrew, a synonym is weave. Weave. You meant it for evil. But God weaved it. Weave. Now, now, now I told you one, but last night I'm doing a little research and this this got me. It's a true story. A sister named Brianna Bonds. Bonds. Brianna Bonds, St. Louis. A few years ago, Brianna's ex didn't understand what ex means. You ever had someone in the past trying to still be in your present and getting in the way of your future? Yeah, that, that, that's right. Brianna has, has this ex who won't leave her alone. And the ex doesn't get the message and the ex shoots her in the back of the head. Shoots her in the back of the head. Brianna didn't even know that she had been shot. She felt a little warmth back there, but that was all because the bullet got stuck in the wheel. Brianna is still here because there's power in the wind. Her ex got what he had coming to him and Brianna is alive and well and living her best life because there's power in the weave because we serve a God who is unbelievable and God is so unbelievable that when other folk come at you wrong God will take what they meant for wrong and somehow bring something good out of it is there a testimony in the house that said that's my story they dogged me but God delivered me they dragged me down but God raised me up because there's power in the weave. I'm done. Congratulations class of 2023. Go on with your bad self and just recognize because you know God, you're one of them ones. I'm one of them ones. Light of the world. I'm one of them ones. The salt of the earth. I'm one of them ones because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid. Y'all excuse me. I know it's Becca Lawrence Sunday, but I'm starting to feel this thing because it dawned on me. I am one of them ones. I am a living testimony. I am a child of the king. I am one of them ones. Light of the world. Salt of the earth. One of them ones. 
Is there anybody here who has made up your mind? You gonna swag on because you are one of them ones. Hate on me if you please. The more you hate, the more I'm gonna elevate because I'm one of them ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anybody here who just wants to justify? Thank you, Jesus. Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed, Christians pray. God, first, I thank you for what you've done in the lives of these graduates. I thank you that when you made us, you made us uniquely. So unique are we. Our fingerprints are different. We're supposed to be one of them ones. And so right now, I pray for these graduates. Bless them to live their blessed life. Put that spirit of excellence in them. Use them to impact this world. Use them to make a difference. Use them to touch and transform this world, this nation, the community in Jesus' name. And then, God, I pray that you will inspire and empower all of us, even if we didn't graduate, to know that we ought to live a life where we are one of them ones. Give us that faith, that commitment, that spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus. And then, God, I pray for those who have no relationship with you, please, as only you can, connect the disconnected. Save the lost. Bring home to your church those who need community in Jesus' name. Listen, we're still praying. If you're online or in the house and you basically have said, yeah, you know what? I want to be one of them ones, but I need to know the one. I need to know the one and only God. If that's you, you're right. You got, you got to know God and know God for yourself. And so if you're here, you're online. And you know, good and well, you need that connection with the one who created you. You're in the right place, it's the right time. And I want you right now, wherever you are, whoever you are, stand up, step out of the aisle you're in, come on down front and give your life to Jesus Christ. Come on, get your life straight with God today. Get your life straight with God right now. Don't wait, don't hesitate, don't vacillate. Do it right now, wherever you are. Won't you stand and won't you come? Give your life to Christ. Do it right now. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. I'm so glad for Brother Cain because guess what? You sitting out there and you know God is speaking to you. God's been speaking to you all service. That's why you even came to church because God is up to something in your life. And so God brought you here on purpose. God brought you here for a reason. So what you waiting on? They still coming. Bless your heart. I love it. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. And you were sitting out there saying, you know what? I don't want to be the first to go up there. Do I go now? I just don't know. And God touched them. So now you ain't got no excuse. So come on. I see y'all coming. Bless your heart. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Today's your day. I want y'all to be one of them ones. Come on down. I see you coming. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Somebody else, come on. Come give your life to Christ. Do it right now. I see you coming. Bless your heart. I love it. I love it. You want that connection? You want to be one of them ones? Come on. Stand up. Step out. Come on down.
give your life to Jesus Christ, do it right now. Preacher, I got that first part right, but my bottom line is I don't have a connection with the church. I, I need community in my life. Listen, we love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor if you're here and you don't have a church home. You're here. You feel led to join church. We'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. Here's what you do. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Join church. Do it right now. Preacher, my deal is this. I used to go to church. I stopped going. I'm ready to get back in church. Today's your day. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. And let's get back in church. Preacher, this is my deal. I just moved to Dallas, Fort Worth from another area. I got a church home back there, but now I live here, work here, go to school here. I don't have a church home here. We'd love to have you. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Join church. Do it right now. If you're online, dial that number 469-498-0210. Email us at join us at friendshipwest.org today you can join church and give your life to Jesus Christ so here it is we're getting ready to stand when we stand that's your signal choirs go sing and when they sing and we stand that's your signal stand up step out come on down and give your life to Jesus Christ and join church y'all ready shall we stand I see y'all coming and won't you come right now to love on them, to connect with them, 
and to build them up as they live out their lives and your calling and purpose for them as one of them ones. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. We're so glad to have you. Please go with our ministers, and I look forward to our fellowship. Come on, y'all. Let's praise God one more time. Please be seated right quick. We could be seated right quick. Uh, we're going to go in just a few. But first, it's offering time. It's offering time. It is offering time. And we want to give in a liberal, loving way. I was flying back yesterday, so I missed what I understand. Deb told me it was just absolutely amazing yesterday over at the 616. This church is about making an impact on the community. And I heard yesterday was absolutely amazing. And, and we gave first, first class services to people who are often treated as second class citizens. But that's how we roll at Friendship West. And so I thank God for you. That happens because of your generosity. It happens when you give liberally and lovingly. It happens when you honor God's word because God's word basically tells us to bring that whole tithe into God's storehouse. The tithe, a tenth off the top of everything God has blessed you with because you're saying with the tithe, God, you are first in my life. A lot of folks like say, I'm putting God first, but you don't tithe. I don't know. I know tithing means putting God first at bottom. And it also means that God entrusts you with all that you have and then God wants the storehouse to serve and impact the community. Help us do that, okay? Please help us do that and give in a liberal, loving way. You can give. You can scan the QR code and give that way. You can also text FWBC on your phone to 972-200-9419 or download the Givelify app if you don't have it already. Search out Friendship West. Follow those prompts. Or you got our website. Y'all online, website, follow the prompts, and you can give or the FWBC app. Let's pray. God, thank you for giving so much to us. We now give back to you. Determine to make an impact in this world. Bless gift and giver. Use these gifts so that through them, your kingdom will come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let me give you these things and we are raising up out of here. Number one, I got to give a special shout out to our, uh, we had infant dedication uh, this morning and so I want to shout out all of the beautiful babies that we dedicated uh, this morning. Uh, we shout them out. Are they here? Are they here? Are they, are, are they still here, Pastor? Huh? Huh? Where y'all at? Bad English on Baccalaureate Sunday. I see you. I see you. There you go. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Yes. Oh, she's so beautiful. All right. And so we had about four or five, and so we praise God. And then we baptized a whole lot of people today. How many? 18. We baptized 18 today. Yeah. 18. 18. If you were baptized, please stand. All of our baptized members. So proud of them. So proud of them. God bless you. Uh, my back is still hurting. That's that's my last baptism ever. I'm never baptizing again. Uh, so I'm old. Old. Old people don't baptize, okay? So, uh, so that was it. So y'all are the class that retired me from baptizing. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Y'all are beautiful. All right, so God bless you. Let me give you these, and then we're done. Uh, first, wow, faith and fitness. That is, I believe, on, uh, is it tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Uh, Women of the West presents No God's Wellness Resources. Dr. Jill Wagner, that sister's bad, the graduate of Bishop College, of course. Deborah P. Haynes, that sister's bad. And so we praise God for what will be a wonderful conversation around faith and fitness. Okay, just because you have faith doesn't mean you have to be unfit. 
Okay. All right. Because I've been be telling my colleagues I got the best looking church in the world. Don't have them coming here and y'all looking. All right? All right. So be here tomorrow night. Be here tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. in the choir room. 7 p.m. in the choir room. Please be here tomorrow night. It's going to be, a, it, it will bless you. Listen, we know too many of us who are struggling with health. Please be here tomorrow night because it's holy to be healthy. All right? All right. Uh, duh, 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 duh. And I'm not judging anybody. Please know this. Also, we're going to have this coming, this Wednesday night, Vision Night Updates. Uh, we had Vision Night in January, and so we promised to come back and update you with everything that's been happening to let you know the halftime report. That's this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please join us. We look forward to seeing you. Also, uh, we're going to go back to City Hall on Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock and uh, implore them to not allow that warehouse to be built and 18 wheelers coming down Wheatland Road, okay? We're going Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. I'm asking you, if you can, please show up uh, and join us. Uh, Joe Dillard and myself, we're going to be speaking, and uh, I would just like to know that y'all have my back because what I want to do is I go speak and then do Malcolm. Y'all remember that? Ms. Matt, did you remember that? Yeah. So we want to do a Malcolm because that will get them. If we do Malcolm, all right, so that's Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock, Dallas City Council. Please, please, please join us, okay? Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock, all right? Uh, da -da 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 -da. I hope, okay, Vision Night update. Oh, my God. Uh, Y'all? What we've been waiting for, a transforming life, yeah, 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 yeah. revival. Yeah, yeah. It's almost here. Yeah, yeah. We got a video. It's almost here. I hear we got a video. Hit it. Friendship West Baptist Church presents the Transforming Life Revival 2023, July the 9th through the 12th. Join us Sunday, July the 9th at 10 a.m. with Bishop Rudolph McKissick, Jr. Then, Monday through Wednesday at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss this powerful, transformative revival. This year's lineup includes... Somebody say, I'm preparing for the prestige, and God is going to bring you back better than ever. You pledged to stay the course. You made the turn, but somebody say, I'm preparing for the prestige. I'm getting ready for my best season yet. Hey, that's the eschatological. You ought to be glad that the theological loved the cosmological, so he sent the Christological to give you the soteriological, so one day you can access the eschatological. He was trying to shift. Bye! says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. The Bible says God answers prayer. Pray without ceasing. Oh, won't he dry your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't so, Mark your calendars for TLR 2023, Sunday, July the 9th through Wednesday, July the 12th. Sunday service begins at 10 a.m. and the weekly services begin at 7 p.m., Monday through Wednesday. Don't meet us here, beat us here. God bless you. It's going to be powerful, so make sure you mark your calendar and let's get ready to experience transformation. All right, God bless you. God keep you. Y'all have an amazing week. Please join us on Wednesday, okay? Wednesday at 9 a.m. City Hall and then Wednesday night 7 o'clock. Let's be here. God bless you. I love you so much. Receive God's benediction. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and grant you peace. Go now in the power of God's Holy Spirit. After all, you one of them ones. In Jesus' name, peace. May his peace be with you till we meet again. May his peace
OMG, that was fire. And we're fired up that you were here for it. You know what would be hot? You're checking out at Friendship West so that you can like, share, or subscribe us on social media. It helps more than you'll know. And also, please go to www.friendshipwest.org and find out even more about this powerful Christian movement. You'll feel all warm inside to see how your prayers, your offerings or monetary gifts and your investment of volunteer time can help make a difference with this difference making ministry. For all who were here as visitors, you can share you were here by taking time to text FWVIZ to the number 28950. If you're fired up about joining our family of faith, don't fight the spirit. Instead, call now, 469-498-0210 or email join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name, your last name, and your cell number. Either way, it will be lit to hear from you. Friendship West Baptist Church.